Welcome back to Around the Table with Stacey Smith. We are discussing the uh, election from last night and also perhaps what the future might hold. And part of the future involves primaries. We talked about this very briefly the last time we were together. And this all goes back to the Donald Trump uh, situation and also the candidates that Republicans nominated for different positions within Pennsylvania, including that of, of governor. Do we need, I'm going to ask uh, the governor and Keith this first, do we need to see a change in how the primaries are run? Oh, I, I agree, absolutely. We had conversations last night uh, off camera, the, the four of us, uh, Jim and I in, in particular. Each party has a group that are at the far left or the far right, the, the extremists. And we continue to drift that way. That's not good for this country. We need to get back to the middle. You can't get back to the middle if you can only vote in a primary in your own party. Uh, and particularly, and, and the vote last night was the vote of the independents really made the difference for both, you know, for all the races. Those independents showed up last night. They should be showing up or be allowed to show up in the primary. And the only way to do that is to open it up and allow uh, independents to vote in one or the other uh, primaries. Uh, when we get into it next year, my I'm going to be making phone calls to the legislature saying, you guys, both sides, you're crazy if you don't open this up. That was the old days. That was 100 years ago. That was 50 years ago. It was 20 years ago. Those days are over. The dynamic In my mind, the jury's still out. I'm not I'm not sure how I, I would well, I would fall on this issue. I think I want to study it more. I definitely am not for showing up at the polls and, and being able to declare your party at the polls. But I am leaning towards the fact that give independents the right to vote in primaries. You know, I, you know, I don't think that uh, uh, we should have a, a totally open primary. I don't think that if you're a Democrat, you show up at the poll and you can vote in the Republican primary. I, I, you, right. you pick a team, you, right. you stay on your team. Uh, but independent voters, I'm OK with them now. And thanks to the governor who's worked, worked me over pretty good on this. Um, I, I'm 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 good with having the independent voters declare a party, pick a party when they show up at the polls. I think the 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 notion that we don't know which party they're going to pick when they show up at the polls helps us keep this thing on track. Keeps the message towards the middle. Yes. You well, have get votes from the other side. If let me ask this question, and and you know, Jimmy, you get your response. But Joe, are you saying if an independent shows up? which is I'm an independent. I'm not registered with either party. If I show up, uh, vote in the primary, and I say I want to vote on the Democratic primary, does that mean I'm now listed as a Democrat for the rest? No, no, no. You're, you, you're, you remain an independent, but in the primary election, when you show up, you can pick a principal, a major party that you're going to vote with in that primary. I think that's, I think that works out very well. Uh, having in a totally open primary, if you know, you could show up if you're registered Republican or Democrat and, and vote in the other uh, party's primary. I think that's cause for mischief. And, yes. and, and I think we should just stay away from that. Similar oh, to parties. That's Rush Limbaugh's Operation Chaos. I mean, yes, you know, right, right. That's just, that's not uh, cool. No, I mean, if, if I'm a party chairman and I know the chairs are having these conversations, you know, what the, What does the chairman want to do? Uh, the chairman wants to have the most viable electable candidate get through that primary, the one that has the best chance to score the touchdown in November. The playbooks are different in the spring versus the fall. Uh, as chairman and as leaders of the party and others who are in a position where they are influencers in the party, if it's about winning with the right candidate, an electable candidate, then you need to do a better job or we need to do a better job of finding candidates, vetting candidates and getting elect electable candidates onto the ballot so that, they're, th that they don't have to run to the middle after having to run to the left or to the right in the spring. Does the introduction of an independent voter into the equation, as the governor said, requ mandate or require us as party leaders to look for more moderates? The answer might be yes. So this is going to be an inter interesting conversation that we have in the weeks and months ahead. I would think that both parties would like the opportunity to have a sneak peek in the spring where independents are headed. Right. It helps them both. So I don't think either one of them would be necessarily opposed to this change. But will we, the final question on this, Will we? is there a possibility the state legislature would make this change? I, th I think there is. There's already a bill there uh, in, in the House. It was in committee in the House. Um, 
I doubt that it, you know the House ends here in a couple of weeks, that that it will pass this year, but it certainly should be reintroduced. And I think if they go back and they do this post mortem of this entire uh, race, they're going to start coming to the conclusion that we can't keep putting people up that are far left and far right. Um, if we're trying to win for our party and win for the entire state and country. All right, we're almost out of time. I want to bring up this final question, and I have my answer, and I'll give mine after I hear from you guys. And that is, if the United States Senate is tied at 50-50, once again, who, which senator will be the most powerful senator for the next two years? Mansion, Right back to Manchin. I don't think it changes. He showed his cards, and I think... He'll, he'll be an influencer again in the next conference. I agree. Joe Manchin, that hasn't changed. All right. Well, <laughs> we are all in agreement because I was going to say Joe Manchin as well. Uh, he he is becoming the most powerful senator in the United States uh, right now, based on a 50-50 Senate once again. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us once again. And thank you for joining us for Around the Table with Stacey Smith. And we hope that you join us again next time.